Hi, my name is Chloe Carroll, and I did the three shots we're about to talk about today, and you're listening to The Film Craziest Show. Hi, my name is Brittany Snayman, and I was the producer on the three shorts that we're going to talk about today, and you're watching The Film Craziest Show. Cool. It's great to have you guys here. How's it going? Good. We're so excited for the opportunity to talk about these short films, so thank you for having us on. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much. Also, Brittany, that was not how I expected your last name to be pronounced. Yeah, it looks like Snyman, but pronounced Snyman. <laughs> okay, okay, good to know. So we yep. are talking about Fear Crypt. So some shorts on your YouTube channel slash production company. Which one do you guys want to start with? Um, I would love to start with Delicious because it hit um, 700,000 views on our YouTube channel today. So th that was actually Brittany's directing debut and it did so awesome on the channel, which is really exciting for us. I saw I saw that. I had that written down in my notes that it, like a 700,000 like today, like this morning. That's that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, we're super. <laughs> And what, what, what's that like for it, like being your first, uh, I think, was that your directorial debut, Brittany? It was, yeah. And I would say that Chloe and I never could have anticipated <laughs> that Delicious would do so well, um, but super, super happy about, you know, as, as many views as it's gotten. It's, it's crazy. Okay. And I, I know you guys went viral on TikTok with someone like posting a bit of it I think she was like watching it or something and it hit like a million views on TikTok yeah we um <laughs> we do owe everything to TikTok uh, actually for that short film because a bunch of um TikTok stars did reviews on it um and that's what drove the audience to the Fair Crypt channel um and one of the uh lead girls in the film her name is Brielle um she looks like a TikTok star and people thought it was her <laughs> and and, it, and it, they thought that we had a TikTok star in the film and it drove um, people to watch it thinking that it was a star, uh, which was just a really great look for us. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how we got so many views, but uh, we're fine with that. That's great for us. <laughs> <laughs> Who did people think she was? Oh, I can't remember who her name is, but she does look a little bit like her. It's another um, blonde girl with long hair. Um, I can't remember her name now. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up, but it was just, it, it's so crazy how, um, how that like affected like my channel as a whole, because I got so many subscribers from just that video and just that moment on TikTok. And like, I've, I've done a bunch of short films before that and I've never been able to get that kind of audience or that amount of people. Like normally I get like three comments on my films and everyone, and it's normally like family members who are like, yeah, great job. <laughs> and, and then like delicious, like there's like over like 2000 comments and um, shares of the film and the audiences, a lot of the audience is like unique viewers. So they're coming straight from TikTok to the channel to watch the 4K version. And then I was um, about a month ago, the first time I'd ever discovered on your YouTube channels is like a copyright um, bar. And you can see anyone who's uploaded Delicious to their YouTube channels to review your short film. So I literally had a list of everyone, like all the people who pirated the film, like and not reviewed it. And then all the people who, um, which you, you, you know, it's actually quite, um, at first you're like, damn, look at them trying to pirate the film. And then you're like, wow, it's good enough to be pirated. <laughs> it's, it's great, like people have made an effort to try and copy the film and it's, you know, um, not condoning that, but it's like a mixed feeling um, that like your, your film feels good enough for people to want to try and put it on their channel. Um, but also everyone who'd reviewed just clips, like anytime you put a clip up, YouTube recognizes the sound and the picture and will alert me so that like I can, you know, promote their reviews on the Fake channel and stuff. And it was just, just really cool because I never had that kind of like enthusiasm about anything on the channel until 
until we got all those subscribers who are now watching like all the newer stuff we put out which is just so exciting sorry i just talked about that for like 10 minutes it was just like a whole new thing for me to have like a youtube audience and it was just really exciting and for Brittany, I guess she was, and, and this was her first film, and she was just like having to go at filmmaking, and her first film went viral. <laughs> so you're, you're you're batting a thousand though, Brittany. That's kind of awesome <laughs> going viral. Thank you. <laughs> for the for the film, what was it like, kind of like finding that balance between like the mom and Davy are kind of creepy, and then Chloe as Scarlett, you're normal. So like, what was it like directing that dynamic? I took a lot from like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I feel like you can probably tell with definitely the dinner scene. So I feel like with like Davy's actions and stuff is very easy to pull from Texas Chainsaw Saw Massacre. And Chloe, I think understood Scarlett immediately. I mean, Chloe wrote the script pretty well. Like she came up with the story. So she understood Scarlett really well. And I feel like Scarlett will put normal, like in quotes, right? Like. You definitely know something was off and obviously she's okay with cannibalism because her entire family cannibals um but uh, i thought it was a lot of fun it was like it was short uh we just filmed for the one day but i i really had a good time to try to like play up davy's like disgustingness and like the twitching from being cannibals you know um yeah so it was a lot of fun i had a good time <laughs> Now, Chloe, did you want to add on to like uh, playing the normal in hindsight with your siblings? I just like that it kind of starts off pretty normal and you think it's like not going to be, I mean, obviously if it's unfair crypt, it's not going to be a nice film, but you just see the three girls walk in and you're like, oh, things are pretty normal. And then the mom starts shaking and you're like, not so normal. And then they walk in, you see Davey and you're like, my God, this is a horror movie. Uh, there's so many comments on the film where people are like, why didn't they just leave? Like anyone would have just left as soon as they saw Davey. <laughs> I know I would have. <laughs> I think the moment where you like start to see that something's not quite right. Well, I guess it's when the mom opens the door and it's a little twitchy. I think people comment on that. Like, why did you even go inside? Like that would have just made me run away. Um, but then Scarlet dropping the coats as well you're like oh, okay that's weird they didn't see it so that wouldn't make them run away and then they see Davy. so but at that point they're already in the house you know so would you would you leave <laughs> it's impolite to leave i think i think that's kind of how they were playing it as well is that they didn't want to be rude uh, you know they were at a what we could say is a friend's place but they couldn't have known her that well <laughs> Yeah, that's true. They didn't even know she was a vegetarian. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I got like very like Allison Williams from Get Out vibes. Just how like you you like it's just like a, a switch kind of like oh now you've put the coats down and now you're like all mean kind of. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Those are when villains do that too because they'll because you like you think oh they're really nice and then if they can switch that quick you're like oh my god they're psychotic but like, they're psychotic <laughs> i love that okay good i think it works well for the short it does i was gonna say the music right the music is like bright and cheery and you have like christmas decorations so that also probably throws everybody off as well <laughs> yeah in a good way does that technically make this a christmas movie Absolutely. Yeah, you should play it at Christmas and Halloween. Best yes. of both worlds. Yeah. Anytime you want to watch it, you know, there's no wrong time. You know, if you want to play it at Easter, it can be an Easter film. It's whatever. <laughs> whatever gets you to watch it, really. <laughs> and especially Thanksgiving with just all the meat. Yes. <laughs> now, um, I love the one comment on the, the one that you guys have pinned that says when when the mom's like oh we're all out of meat and then the guy comments your plate is literally still full Dave. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny that was one of the early comments that I, where like the, the people get like personally upset watching the film too like they'll be like I can't believe that like this cannibal family was allowed or something and I'm like it's not a real film like I think people get too into it 
um some of the comments and some of the comments that aren't like i came from tiktok which is most of them are really funny <laughs> yeah i think that it seems like they think it's a documentary or something right <laughs> yeah well there's always some people who are like this 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 film is an abomination of cannibals and i can't believe and you're like this is not a real movie this is a horror film but um people <laughs> We'll get into it and have lots of comments, so they're quite fun to read. <laughs> Fair. Now, Brittany, did you do the SFX for this as well, or was that just for the other two shorts? Technically, I did the SFX for this, but there wasn't that much SFX, and I actually think Chloe's the one who throws the blood at the part where, like, Davy's like, eating the meat and the blood flings on Olivia who's the actress yeah Chloe was the one doing that because I think I was behind the, the screen trying to direct that part <laughs> that's my favorite part about making horror films is throwing blood at someone off screen because you can tell like and I've had it done to me too as an actor and you're just like you can't look like you are expecting the blood to hit you um, but you know there's so like a PA just off screen of either a paintbrush or a bucket like ready for action and they can't wait to just throw it on your face. And I got that that moment to do that on Delicious, which is um, a change from normally it happening to me. So, I, you know, that did bring the joy, I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> okay. And we did it for, in, in Slash 2, um, Lauren Levera, who was playing the girl at the start of Slash, I... I had the same thing where I just had like a big paintbrush and I just whacked it and then the blood goes all over her face and it's it's just the best moments. And it was the same one, Delicious, with a little brush. And then Nefarious was like a whole... Oh my gosh. I legit... Was a whole... <laughs> In Nefarious, I, I have a pump that I use for the blood sometimes and that's what I was using the pump and it was crazy. There was so much blood. <laughs> A poor actress. I was like, I'm not playing that role. <laughs> yeah. You read all. You read the part of the script with the blood, and you're like, no, that's not for me. Like, yeah, but I, I did have full SFX on my face already, so I did my part for the film. <laughs> and I, oh, and I had like, um, we were gonna make like black corn syrup, like the black stuff that comes out of her mouth. Sorry, Daniel, I'm talking about a different short film, but I just. No, it's okay. About. <laughs> but um we were supposed to have like um it, like black goo coming out of her mouth and i was so worried about like having corn like black dyed corn syrup because that's how we make the blood normally in my mouth for so long i was like my teeth are going to be rot rotting all day so we ended up using charcoal toothpaste so i was literally just pouring toothpaste into my mouth and like it was just mixing with my saliva and it was coming out like just goo and I was like spinning it all over the floor and everywhere I walked, there was just like a trail of like black slime. It was disgusting. But I actually did have a minty fresh mouth, which was good. <laughs> I actually think the toothpaste in that instance worked pretty well as well because it, it wasn't super runny, kind of how corn syrup is, right? Yeah. It was gross. It made totally. it even more disgusting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was sweet. Now, was that for Elysia or was that for a different one? That was for Nefarious. I also do split blood out in Elysia as well. Um, it's just a it's just a thing I do on set, Daniel. Like, <laughs> like to spit blood out and throw blood at people. It's like, it just always ends up happening. I don't know how. Um, it's not okay. like I write the scripts, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> so those are your favorite shorts where you get to have the the minty freshness right yeah okay i was wondering if that was like <laughs> chocolate sauce or like what that was made of because it seems like it would be kind of gross to have in your mouth for long periods of time yeah my dentist would be so upset if i did that for a whole day but the charcoal toothpaste worked it's actually doing my dentist a favor <laughs> yeah yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, my last one for Delicious. How'd you end up casting Olivia and Brielle as the two friends in this short? Um, so Brielle, I knew from the honeymoon phase. Um, if anyone's seen the honeymoon phase, she, play, she plays the cheerleader that gives birth to the baby in the barn. Oh. Um, yeah, so I asked, I asked her if she would be interested in this role, and she was like, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, and Olivia, we just cast, we didn't know Olivia before. Um, 
So um, Brittany just cast her. And Lauren, who plays Davy, I knew before he, he's not, so I knew him as a filmmaker um, and I asked him if he'd be interested in this and he was like down for it. And then Anne, who played the mom, she was just cast from a casting site too. So it was only the mom and Olivia who, were, who we didn't know ahead of time, but they were both great. They're part of the Fair Crypt and End Eternal family now. Now, did you want to talk about Tix next or Elysia? Do you have any preference, Brittany? No, Tix is the first one that came to mind. <laughs> Get out! Get out! What do you want me to do? It's a catch! It's a catch! Oh my god! Oh my god! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! So you, you actually do the SFX on Tix, Brittany. So what was that like? Uh, Tix was a lot of fun. Specifically creating a little tick that uh, goes on Chloe's actual like stomach area. So I was... I created it out of coat hangers. It was just the metal hangers. And so I had a bunch of pieces going in essentially. And like one of them was one leg and I had another hanger for the other leg and then another hanger, which was actually doing the like body piece. So I was on the side of Chloe with my like fingers in these coat hangers, moving the pieces. It was, it was insane too, because we had Wes who was over top of like everybody trying to shoot. Right. Plus you had me and then you had Chloe and the two other actors, like everybody's in the tent. It was everybody on set was in the tent. It was insane. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That is um, not a spacious tent either. No, it was fairly small. Right, Chloe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were all very close. I just remember the one take, it was like, right, the camera was right above my head and it's the bit where I like lean up to like look at the tick. And Wes is just stood there and the camera is like <laughs> right above his crotch. And he's like, look really surprised. And I'm like, it just looked so wrong. <laughs> like I was reacting like horribly <laughs> to, to just Wes's crotch because the camera was right there. <laughs> It was so funny um, because we were all in this tight. There was nowhere to stand or sit that wasn't like right above each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's really cool. That, yes. On top of that, when we were filming the tick part as well, you know, we would get each take, but we would just like pour, we were pouring the blood on before every take. Oh my gosh. There was so much blood. Chloe, you were a trooper that day. You were just like covered in blood. <laughs> well, we did it the, the first, so we were originally supposed to film everything else and then the tent scene last. And because of like okay. weather conditions, we ended up filming the tent scene in a garage. So not only was the tent claustrophobic, but then it was inside a small garage. So it was really claustrophobic and everyone was in there because it was raining. And, um, I was directing that short film. Uh, so I was like looking at the camera while all the close-ups were on my belly and they were just pouring all the blood on me. And it wasn't until I stood up that I realized I didn't have spare clothing because we were gonna shoot it the other way. So all my clothes were like just soaked and I was like, oh my gosh, I need like a new pair of leggings now, like for the role. Um, and so Phil was like, ah, oh. so like one of the PAs ran out to get like new clothes and stuff, but there was a good, that was going to take like an hour and I needed to get like the shots of Blake and Gabriella, um, like the shots that I wasn't in, but I needed to be there to direct and I didn't want to be like covered in like sticky blood. It was, it was so gross. So <laughs> I actually ended up taking, like I went into the bathroom, took all my clothes off and Phil, my husband, gave me all of his clothes. So I went out there in like oversized man clothes <laughs> to finish directing for an hour while Phil had to like sit naked in the bathroom waiting for my clothes to arrive. <laughs> so he was just sat there for like an hour. Like I was like, he's the most supportive husband ever. I was like, thank you for supporting me <laughs> through this. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. I'll just be here in the bathroom with this <laughs> dog. <laughs> Now, did you give him his your his clothes back when yours got there, or did he have to wear yours? Uh, he wore mine. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I gave him his back, and then <laughs> do you imagine him coming out in like tight leggings? Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, that would be funny. 
Uh, no, he was happy to get his clothes back. There's actually a picture of me that Wesley, the DP, took on set of me in like full man clothes, like massive oversized, just like stressed because I was directing and acting and shouldn't ever do that again. It's too much for me. <laughs> like, but uh, it was it was cool for a, a three minute shot. I'm not sure I would want to do it on a longer project. I've given up directing now, and now Brittany's going to take over for any fair crook shots. <laughs> So just not for you, like, handling everything, right? No, I, I, I love producing and I love acting, but, like, and some people can do it amazing. Like, they can act and direct, but, like, just the, it just takes so much longer to, like, rewatch shots after you're in the shot and it just adds time to production and, you know, it's stressful because then it feels like you can't 100% concentrate on one role. You know, so if you're acting, like you're thinking about the character and everything, but if you're also producing as well, like you're all, you're always worried about like time management and everything and is everything working? And if you're also directing on top of that, everyone's like looking to you for like, you know, what should we do if anything goes wrong? And I was like, this is too much for me. <laughs> like, and I just, no, I shouldn't have done this. Um, but it was fun for this three minute show, but I don't think I'll be doing it again. <laughs> It is three minutes long. So like, how long did it take to film? Just a weekend or just a day? Um, just a day. Okay. Most of, most of, pretty much all of our shots are just a day because we make them on like no budget almost. Like um, the budgets are just so small that like it's easy to just pay everyone for a day instead of multiple days. So we write the scripts to be really short. Um, the only one that we've done multiple days on um, was Alicia. That was two days. So we got a bit adventurous and we did two days. That was the, the only time. We had, uh, technically, we did pick up shots for Nefarious, which technically is another day, but we didn't eat a full crew or actors or anything. In Slash, we did two days. So I'm lying. Slash and Alicia, we did two days. Are most of the films like made as proof of concepts for feature films or are they kind of where it was ticks more like just like a little little tre creepy treat at three minutes long um so most of my shorts i made just originally as short films but now now, now that i'm trying to get into doing feature films um and now that i'm pitching the feature version of alicia I'm going back and looking at my other shots and trying to make them into features by using the short film as a proof of concept. So um, I can show that it had an audience and it did, like, if it did well, like how I know I can sell it to make it into features. So when I made them, they weren't intentionally proof of concepts, but now they all are. And I'm going to use all of them to try and get a feature done. And oh, oh, some really good news um, about ticks actually that happened in the last few weeks as it got um, distribution on Arrow Video in the UK. So we, um, we won a competition um, for female filmmakers um, that was like, it was for a new feature film called The Stylist that came out and they were looking for female mm -hmm. filmmakers to submit short films. Um, and we submitted ticks and uh, it came uh, Gabriella won Best Actress and we won Best Art Design for Tick. So, so we went, we're on their website. I think it's up now, which is really cool um, to like feel like we got distribution for short. And that was really exciting and out of nowhere. Um, so you bet I'll be trying to make a feature of it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, I saw that announcement on Twitter. So congrats. That's, that's cool to be on that platform. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You talking about that, you might want to make it into a feature. I feel like that would be like, I don't know a lot about uh, like the effects budget, but I feel like that would be like a good one to do just because it's like what cast of three and it's like, feels like it would be like budget friendly too, right? Uh, yeah. If, if, if Brittany's the SFX artist and she wants to make all of those physical ticks, it will be budget friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it would be a good one to do. Actually, to, out of every film that I've ever made for Fair Crypt, Ticks did the best in the festival circuit um, because people just really like gory horror films, especially like body and gross insects and stuff. Like, I think it just freaked people out. Um, so it did really good. So I think that one would be a really good feature. Um, yeah. What do you think, Britt? <laughs> 
Let's do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I also mean, gonna say for going back to delicious, um, people some people have even been like, Where's part two? as well. So that's something Chloe and I have been like, should we do it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, like a web series. Yeah, we probably will. It's just it's doing too good not to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll, do you have any ideas for it yet or is that just not at that phase yet? Uh no no real story ideas. Um because I don't know if I want to do it as a feature film or as a web series. That's something we're kind of debating. Uh, it's hard because, like, there's a lot of cannibal stories already out there. So it's got to, like, if we were to do it, we want to make it something that's really unique and, like, a story that's maybe not been told a million times. Like, the short film is about cannibals and it's pretty stereotypical, you know, like, they're a cannibal family. The, the one thing I like about Delicious is that one of them isn't. So like not everyone's participating and then you think, wow, do they have a different agenda and what's going on and learning more about the family? I don't know. I don't know. But we haven't got any like specific storylines yet. I don't know if you have any ideas that have brewed since we last talked, Britt. No, nothing recent. <laughs> Matt, we put, we're putting all of our time into um, the Alicia feature film right now. It's taken up so much time. <laughs> That's a good way to transition into talking about Alicia. So, I'm going to start by telling you what it's like living with Molly. What phase is that in the production? Are you guys writing the feature script for it? Yeah, we have the feature script and we have the um, the pitch materials. We're just going out to investors now. Um, the feature film is actually called Need to Feed. Uh, and it's like an adaptation of Alicia. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm a spin-off of Need to Speed. We were like, <laughs> we got to do it now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm that Daniel likes the name because I feel like we, we could not come up with a name for the longest time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I need, really need to feed. <laughs> so it's so cheapy, I think, because um, we wanted Bloodlust, but there's been so many films that are already called Bloodlust. And yeah. I was like, oh, I need, it needs to be something original. Um, and I know it's kind of cheesy, but I feel like the fact that people like, like, they think it's a bit cheesy, then I think that'll intrigue them to like read about it or watch it. Um, Memorable. I don't know. You know, yeah, we might go to distribution. They might be like, it's a hard no. Like, we're going to change the name. Um, but we will film it needs to feed until then. <laughs> now, for the short film, when did you guys film that one? <laughs> so we filmed it in February, right before COVID which is insane oh, okay. because we would not have been able to make this movie during COVID. Like, you know, I was the other actress, like there was a point where I was literally like spitting blood into her mouth. And like, it was everything like we just couldn't have done if it was COVID and it was yeah. right before. And then after set, we were like, oh my God, if we didn't know, like we just wouldn't have done this type of movie right now. Um, but it was filmed before everything came out about the virus. Um, and everyone was fine, thank God. But yeah, it was yeah. It was I, I, February, right, February twenty twenty. So it literally was right before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I think it. Yeah, I okay. um, I think that I'm glad we got it. We did do a festival run with it. Um, okay, which festivals did it go to? So it went to um. The most recent one that it's going to in a few months that um, we're actually going to Texas for is the Houston Horror Film Festival. Um, it went to um, Other Worlds Film Festival, which was so good. That was what we went with the honeymoon phase of that too with my feature film. Um, it's such a good festival. Um, Books Fever uh, Film Festival, which is the one that's like super local to where I was living at the time and we love them. And they also screen the honeymoon phase. Um, it went to Panic Fest Trick or Treats, which was like their spin-off virtual one. Um, am I missing any, Britt? I'm trying to think. I think it just played at first glance. Played at first glance, yeah. That's been the most recent one it has played at. And Houston's in a few months. 
And um, then there was one in LA as well that you just went to. That's first glance. Oh, you mean first take? It played at first take. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. And then, it, and which is in um, Pennsylvania, and then it played at first glance, which is in LA, which was the first time I'd ever seen it on the big screen, which is really exciting. And then Britt's going to Texas, and that'll be the first time she's seen it in the big screen. So we're so excited. This is like our passion project right now. We're like really working hard to get it made. So I, I can't wait to talk to you about the feature film when it's out. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm looking forward. To, I like the short, so I'm looking forward to the feature version of it. Now, you'll can be we... the first to see it. Sorry, what did you say, Colleen? You'll be the first to see it. <laughs> that sounds good. Cool. Um, I don't think it'll be like too explicitly like spoiler territory, but I was just kind of, at the end of the short, that's just kind of teasing like a vampire hunter kind of thing. I'm curious if like, the feature would be more action oriented or horror? So um, the feature film is kind of a prequel to the short film. Um, and it shows the origin stories um, of, in, in the short film, she's called Molly, um, but she's called Lyra in the feature film um, because she changes her name often um, through the years. And it shows you how, um, like, what kind of person she is and, and her story with um, dating nurses. Uh, <laughs> and um, we're not, it's hard to fully explain the plot because there's a few things we're talking about potentially changing in the feature film, depending on okay. cast and stuff. Um, but it pretty much shows you the origin stories of Molly, who is in the short film, and um, her son, who is, um, dying of lung cancer. And she, pretty similar to the short film, um, she has an elderly human son who's dying and he doesn't want to turn because he doesn't want to become a monster like his mom, but she doesn't want to live without her son and can't deal with the grief. So she, um, she kidnaps uh, a little boy, which she does in the short film, and she just pretends that that's her son. And it's just really, it's really, creepy because she's never going to let go of having a son and that's how she's dealing with immortality and it's like a sad it's like a sad horror film um but there is some action stuff in it gosh I'm so horrible at pitching um Brittany take over please <laughs> I, <take you> on. <laughs> I was gonna say it's I, I feel like tone wise it's probably very similar to the okay. short itself so like it has drama aspects which chloe and i both are not we don't do drama which as you've seen most of our other shorts there's not a lot of drama in there so um that's fun that's something new uh, but it's also got the horror aspects and of course lots of blood we always have lots of blood <laughs> i think that's at the top of the list lots of blood <laughs> typically yes <laughs> especially for a vampire story yes okay cool Want, we were talking about while you're looking um like filming alicia and everything and i feel like we have some good stories from filming it if you're interested in any of those totally Ooh. up to you yeah I, uh, see i, I, I love say... it i love it when you ask answer your own questions <laughs> perfect <laughs> um i was just gonna say so we filmed it at i don't live there anymore but it was the house that i was living at and we were just renting it so we filmed it there. Um, the the scenes, there's some scenes down in the basement where you see it's actually like a lifting rack, but that's like her dungeon area. So that's down in the basement where the snake was. Um, and then the bedroom was actually our bedroom, but all the walls previously were white. We painted just the walls around the bed, that red color, because <laughs> we really, really wanted to have red walls. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, we, we both we both approached Brittany's husband together and we were like, can we paint the whole house? <laughs> Luckily, he's just as supportive as my husband and he was like, whatever it takes you girls to be happy. <laughs> and then like the week later, we were painting the whole house. <laughs> and you only painted those four walls or did you do more? So... There was, there was kind of an issue where our the space with the bed was kind of small 
So there wasn't a lot of space on either side of the bed for the camera. And so the part where she actually like pulls the piece off the window, there was no usable space essentially. So we actually recreated that downstairs on the first floor. We painted maybe like two feet of space around a window down on the first floor, took one of the dressers and threw it in the corner and just recreated the window and it totally worked. <laughs> Yeah, and then when we left set, the house just looked <laughs> very interesting. Just with oh, random nice. walls, I'm neatly painted because it was me and Brittany and Phil. I dragged my husband into doing it. None of us are painters, so we were just having a go. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know. We painted the bare minimum. As soon as we got to where we knew the camera wasn't going to be, we were like, all right, we're done. Like the line wasn't straight, it looked horrible. <laughs> like some zigzags of lives. <laughs> okay, I love it. Cool. Um, so Brittany, like it, it kind of like the set design is cool. It kind, it's kind of like a torture chamber. Oh, oh. Like yeah. So you you have one of those in your in your old house? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we had a torture chamber. <laughs> um, it was actually just it was a lifting rack, so like a squat rack that we use. Oh. So you, okay. yeah, at one point you see his clothing, like the little boy's clothing hanging off of it. That's actually what that is. Uh, we don't have it anymore. We moved into an apartment in the city. So we had to get rid of a bunch of stuff. So like that bed, unfortunately would have been perfect for the feature. The bed's gone. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So is the dungeon, so. <laughs> My friend had like the old World War II like shackles and stuff and he lent us all of them. I would use a collector to hang over them and like we were worried at first because it looks kind of like some kind of weird bondage contraption <laughs> and it was like it's gonna look like Brittany has this weird sex thing in the face. Shades of Alicia. <laughs> yeah. uh, so and especially with the handcuffs on the bed upstairs it just looked like the kinkiest movie. <laughs> we're like we're gonna have to put some like heats up here so it looks more like Tortury dungeon and not so much like a like Molly's a kingster. Um, but yeah. <laughs> a little bit of both, I think. Yeah. <laughs> different people think different things when they see it. <laughs> okay. Now what, what was it? I've read in the credits that you guys had a snake wrangler. So what was it like having the wrangler and the snake on set? So um, the snake wrangler is my um, good friend and he, um, he knew a couple who had a snake and I, I had really no experience with snakes before the short film. Um, like I'd held snakes before, but I'd never really been interested in them. He's like, oh, they have a ball python. And like, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Like I didn't know anything about them. And it was this really like cute, friendly snake. And we actually kept him, I kept him in my apartment for a few weeks um because he was kind of like living with us until we could take him to set and I just like fell in love with the snake so cute so nice and just calm and I was like wow you know when you think of snakes you think of like evil serpents from the garden of Eden type of like thing and then and then I I met this cute little snake and it was just so adorable like I, had it I didn't even know the snake and I had it like close to my face and everything it was just so gentle um because at first I was really frightened of picking it up and then like I started just watching the weeks come in before the shoot, I started just watching TV with it around my neck and stuff so I could get like familiar with it. So I wasn't afraid on set. Um, and then it stayed with Brittany the night before. Um, we just took the tank around. It was just so cute. Um, and I, I, we potentially might have that snake in the feature because I have my own snake now that looks very similar, but she's like five feet. So she's a little bit bigger than Archer but I don't know if I can fly it from LA to yeah. Philadelphia, which is where we'll probably film. But actually just totally going off track and talking about snakes because I'm an enthusiast <laughs> now. Like since that short film, I bought my own snake and like, like really into snakes. And then, uh, but he will probably be the snake wrangler on the feature film. And we're looking at getting a much bigger snake. So, um, the one we're looking at getting now is a red tail boa so they're the ones that get to like seven to ten feet for the feature film Damn. um so, yeah so he'll be the snake wrangler for that and he'll be the one 
you know, put it on my neck or like in between takes and like making sure the snake is fine and not stressed. And um, yeah, it's such a cool title, Snake Wrangler. Like, but he basically just made sure the snake was fine and that like um, I had someone to pass it to on and off camera because the DP actually didn't like snakes at all. And we, and the close-ups of the snake, we got a B cam to film because he didn't want to go anywhere near it. This is a cute little snake. <laughs> um but he wasn't he wasn't having it because i i found out pretty quickly after getting my own snake that some people really don't like snakes and they're really afraid of them even like the little puppy dog ones like ball pythons um with no fangs and no venom or anything it's like having a hamster uh but they just look kind of intimidating uh all right i i talk i've talked about snakes now i've gone off on a tangent like, <laughs> no i love it i feel like that's <laughs> Is there going to be like a lot of imagery of the snakes in the in the future? Like I feel like that I, could I be, definitely be on the poster even, right? Yeah, just a vampire with this, the two vampires with the snake, like it'll sell just from that. <laughs> I think so. What what's your what's your pet snake's name? Medusa. Fitting. Yeah, I, I know everyone calls the snake Medusa, but I just couldn't not call it Medusa. I, I just think it's so badass. And I have like statues of um, Medusa around her cage, uh, like the really badass ones. And actually a friend was coming to visit the other day and he was like, you should put like petrified stone rats in her enclosure. So it looks like, <laughs> like I was like, that would be so cute. Like she could have her own little like petrified garden. I don't know, it's just so cool <laughs> that's that's a good idea <laughs> that is good. i really like yeah. that and i hope you do it <laughs> I, I think i will um and then we because me and my husband uh, i say me and my husband me and i will probably get my own way i'm gonna get some more snakes too and each of them will have a theme and he really likes jurassic world so we really like the name blue for the next one like after the velociraptor and jurassic world and we'll get like the jurassic world gates for a tide and stuff so each each snake tank can have like a theme it's gonna be so cute i can't say good but um i'll let you know when i do it <laughs> uh, this feels like the snake he likes this one now like at first I because I, I pitched to him I was like I would love to get like a, a baby snake like you know like a little little tiny snake and he was like okay you know if that's what you really need right now like I admired him for so long to get the snake and then we ended up ended up looking like to adopt because I was like well we should really adopt and not buy from a pet store like because there's so many like people get a snake and then just don't want to have a snake anymore and right? get rid of it and I'm like we should adopt and then the one that we ended up adopting is like massive <laughs> like and she was like super aggressive when we first got her because she was stressed like she'd been delivered in a truck and um like in her full tank and um didn't know who we were who we was and was like air striking like in the enclosure and phil was like parent like putting like um he put like a metal bar on the enclosure so like he definitely couldn't get out and he's having nightmares and now like he loves her now like he'll sit with her around like his neck while he's writing and stuff like she's a big softy she was just stressed when we got her because like it was a change of owners um but now she's like the nicest snake she has her own instagram and she gets she has, i think she has more followers than me like my damn snake um and i take a picture of everyone who holds her now and um yeah, I think people actually come to see us for the snake, like not to come and see me. And they're like, oh, I heard you have a snake. And I like, <laughs> can I play with the snake? And I'm like, yeah, of course, if, if I can get a picture for Instagram. I've gone on a tangent again, guys. I would just talk about snakes for 10 years. So you're going to have to cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. No, I, I was the one who brought up the snakes the second time. And <laughs> it's funny. And yeah, now, now it up. When he brought up, Brittany was like, oh, God, don't, don't ask her about the snake. <laughs> I just walked away. <laughs> so is it going to be fun for you guys to go back to PA to film the movie? 
Yeah, I, I most of my like team from doing the Fair Crypt shorts enroll in enroll in um, Philadelphia, and I just we have a lot like when you're making low budget shorts, like um, you normally use like locations from like friends and family. Like a lot of people help you out, but in LA, it's totally different. Where you need like permits and everything costs more mon money, and and it's just it would just be a lot more expensive. And we don't really know anyone out here, so like I would have to crew with completely new people and. Um, at least if I do it in Philly, like I know all the cast and crew people there and I know like people who I know I work well with and you know, it, I think it would just be better in Philly. Um, so I think we're gonna do it there. I mean, we're open, like if, if we find an investor that's like, it can only shoot here, then we'd be open to changing it. But if it's kind of gonna be, um, if we can't do it in Philly, that's where I would like to do it. Okay. And, and Brittany, you're still based in Philly? I'm still, yeah, I still live in Philadelphia. Okay, all right, cool. Not in LA yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> yes, uh-huh, that's correct, one day. <laughs> so just kind of staying on the topic of snakes in a way, or just transitioning from the snakes, just, I, I noticed on ticks that someone commented like, oh, um, like at least it wasn't bed bugs. So is that kind of like your mantra, mantra, I guess, for fear trip, just like tapping into what scares people and like that collaboration and like seeing what scares them and then kind of, is that like a basis of some of the ideas? Yeah, no, I, I think that's spot on. Um, ticks was like made from my own fear of ticks. Um, like that really freaked me out when I got to America. I don't know if we, like ticks, is, I, did, I never felt like ticks was a problem in England. And I don't know if it's because uh, of the colder weather in general um, or what, but I was never worried about ticks ever until I got to America and like, I'd go and walk the dog and everyone was like, make sure you wear like, you know, long trousers and the ticks will fall from the trees. And I'm like, what? Like, I've never like been worried about that before. And then that just, that was really scary to me. Um, and then just like general, um, like just general things that make people scared are obviously stuff that is good to tap into for horror filmmakers. Um, I didn't think snakes was going to be such a big thing for people. Um, but I, and we are obviously like in Alicia, like the sound design, like we made the snake hiss in, in post, like Archer never hissed, like a little so cute and nice. And we were like made it, like we added sound effects that make it like a bit scarier. And we'll do like we'll do that in every horror film we do. Okay. Um, but yeah, like oh my god, now I have to do bed books. Bed books is even worse because I just can't even like they spread so easy too. All right, there's the next one. You came up with it. Now you're a producer. <laughs> <laughs> now what 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 scares you guys? Like what personally? Like what would what would you want to see in one of your movies or like in a movie? That's a loaded question, just for the question to be what scares both of you. I'm really frightened of sharks, um, but man, that would be a high budget film <laughs> if we decided to do something like that. Um, I, I watched, there was one film I watched on YouTube and it was like pool shark, um, but I used to always be really frightened of a shark being in a pool. Um, I just like a phobia that somehow a shark could survive in chlorinated water, um, which scientifically doesn't make sense, but like, it's just so scary. Like, I like that idea, like playing with that theme, like a shark gets into, you know, it, but that's very, it's such a stereotypical shark story. Um, or like, um, I wanted to do a micro shot where, uh, do you know, like in Nightmare on Elm Street where the claw comes up between Nancy's legs? Do you know when you've got like all bubbles in your bath and you can't like see or like, you've got like essential oils and it makes it kind of cloudy? Like I was playing with this idea of like someone like feeling something in the bath and like looking underneath and it just being like a massive shark coming up and eating them like in the bath. It's just like... <laughs> totally irrational and it's like totally a thought that I used to have as a kid like what if the shark in my bath and suddenly the bottom falls out kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street style and then you're in a tank and there's a shark like but then um, that would be like very um what's the filmmaking style 
experimental. Um, you know, I'm not into experimental film, so I, I'm not even sure how the narrative would go. All right, you go, Brent. Let's <laughs> tangent in again. Oh, Definitely not scared of sharks. Um, I actually went cage diving with sharks in South Africa a couple of years ago. So that was a cool. good time. Great whites. Scary, and but cool. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Like, I'm not scared of sharks, but it's, it's still scary when you're, like, staring at one. It's, like, a foot away, and it's just, like, a metal bars between. So that was pretty crazy, and I can imagine Chloe probably would not have done that. Is that... <laughs> I would I would do it, because I, like, get the adrenaline from being frightened. That's why I do it. Um, but, my God, I'm sure if that cage dropped, you'd suddenly get real frightened of those sharks. <laughs> So I, I will say they put flotation like devices on the edge of the cage. So even if it like broke off the side of the boat, it can't sink down. Well, it's not supposed to. How about I put it that way? <laughs> yeah. Until the shark eats the flotation device. Yeah. Then you're just you about that. Because I, I just thought about that right now. <laughs> That's 47 meters down. They made a film. Did you exactly. see it? I was about I, to, I, was, I was about to say, and like unless you're in the movie 47. 47 meters down and then you're <laughs> yeah when 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 they like it this is a spoiler so no one listen if you want to watch 47 meters down but like they have to decide whether to swim up into the sharks to get out of the cage and i'm like i would just suffocate in that cage rather than take my <laughs> chance to get out. like i would just die at the bottom of the ocean then even think about swimming up like i wouldn't even try I, to live i choose death <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, oh my god. I have so much anxiety watching that movie. I sat like holding my breath, like on the couch at home, like <gasps> like like an idiot because I'm so frightened of sharks. It's ridiculous. But I would cage dive because then my adrenaline, I'd get my like adrenaline. I, I, are you more scared of drowning or are you more scared of sharks? Is the question. <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna say I would choose the sharks in that scenario. I would not want to drown. <laughs> I good reaction would be I'd drown because I even though the shock death would be quicker if it like ripped you in half real quick. Um I just I'm just so I'd be so nervous. It'd just be so awful. I actually <laughs> funny we talk about this. I'll just do one more tangent. Um I just got this new game um on the Xbox called Man Eater and you play as a shark. Um, I don't, I don't like any underwater creatures like crocodiles and stuff scare me just as much as sharks and crocodiles are like one of the main enemies and I have to, like I was playing it now as like, you know, an adult woman and had to turn it off because I was like, it's just too frightening. I just can't play this game because the crocodile was chasing me on the screen. <laughs> so yeah, I will probably drown. <laughs> More <or less. laughs> I choose drowning. <laughs> Even as a shark, I choose drowning. Yeah. 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 Now, now Brittany, <laughs> what, what else scared you? What else scares you? I don't like spiders, which is, I think, it's pretty stereotypical. I don't, I've never minded bugs. So, like, you know, if there's a stink bug on you, like, I don't care. I'll take it off. I'll touch it. But the only one I don't want to touch ever is spiders. They, I don't like the way they move. Just stay in your corner and I'll stay in mine. That's <laughs> how I feel about spiders. <laughs> okay. But what, what if you were playing in a video game where you could play as a spider? <laughs> then maybe I'd be okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now, like, see, I'm, I'm not bothered. I'm not too bothered by ticks, but like in horror movies, I hate it when they're like, like that movie creeped me, your movie, your film creeped me out because of the, just the effects and just like, the way it looks like on the arm but like i remember watching this movie called uh the amazing panda adventure and there's like leeches in that movie and that leeches freak me out well like leeches and leeches and ticks do like the same thing where like you could not know that there was 700 of them on your back because they just attach to you and start eat drink in your blood and you won't know until you look and I I like thought about that I was like I would come home after walking the dog and I could turn around and there could be 700 ticks on my back and I might not know 
And it's the same with leeches. And it's just that fear of like not being able to see them because they're so small. It's like, it's the same with mosquitoes. We should make a movie about mosquitoes too. Hey, mosquitoes. Um, they're like the biggest killer in, in the world too. Like more than like sharks, spiders, because they silently give people diseases. And you'd never know, you were bit by one. True. And now there's like killer wasps and everything too. Or like, what was that news story? I think there is like, like mutant wasps or something. I don't know. Oh, really? I've like not heard of that. Murder hornets, I think is what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've got, we've got all these movies. Now, now you're going to end this podcast and you're going to see Coming to Fear Crypt, The Return of the Mosquitoes, Killer Hornets, The Leech Beyond. <laughs> like, just all these, like, <laughs> just, yeah. I wanted to end by asking um, if you had moral of the story for each of the three shorts, what, what do you think it would be for each one? Like, I'll, I can right, go for- first as an example with like, with with ticks, I would I feel like the moral there is uh, don't forget the bug spray. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Brittany, I'll let you take these. <laughs> Think about for like delicious. It's probably like don't go home with people that you don't actually know. <laughs> you know, I like that one. Okay, and then for Alicia. Don't kidnap. <laughs> I feel like don't be a bitch. <laughs> That's a good moral. Okay. No, I, I feel like hmm, a little bit more than that, because like Alicia thought she knew Molly as well. So I feel like there's something with like trust. Yeah, be careful going. who you. Trust. Okay, it's thought thought provoking, I think. (laughs) Nice. Now, my my last one, uh, did you guys want to plug any upcoming shorts? So the one that we recently filmed, um, we're calling it right now, Death By, uh, and it has to do with The Sims. So it's a girl who's playing The Sims 2. Um, She's pretty sadistic, so she's killing all of her Sim characters one by one, different ways. And the last one, dies you see her die um but then comes back in the game and essentially it's kind of like the game now flips on her and now she's being controlled by the character in the sims game and it doesn't end well (laughs) (laughs) wow okay those those all sound great but like that one specifically like that's my shit (laughs) i like that i like that a lot i can't wait to watch that one so Chloe Carroll and Brittany Snayman, who Chloe founded Fear Crypt, and you guys do kind of everything for the YouTube channel slash production company. So thank you for coming on the Film Crazy Show and chatting your short films. Thank you so much for having us. We were so excited to talk about our films today. Yeah, thank you. This was awesome.